Uh, thanks a bunch for having me, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, as Augustin just said, I'm going to be talking about symplectic instant homology of knots and links. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, there we go. All right, so I'll start with a little bit of introduction, and then I will discuss my construction of this so-called symplectic instant homology. And I'll talk about some of the principal results uh, on this construction, and then I'll talk about uh, some ongoing investigation that I'm doing. Great, so uh, first I'll motivate uh, this construction that I've carried out um, at the sort of, uh, the po point of origin here is the singular instanton knot homology developed by Kronheimer and Morovka back in 2011. So this is a gauge theoretic floor homology invariant of knots and links in three manifolds. So on the face of it, nothing immediately to do with symplectic geometry and, and symplectic topology, but by the Atia floor conjecture, there's this connection between gauge theoretic invariants and so-called Lagrangian floor homology invariants, which are um, really kind of symplectic in their nature. And in particular, I have uh, there's lots of so-called symplectic instant homologies for three manifolds out there. There's uh, one constructed by Manolescu and Woodward based on the so-called extended moduli space. There's another recent construction due to Daimi, Fukaya, and Lipiansky. Um, but for my purposes, I found it best to work with uh, a version of this developed for three manifolds in 2017 by Henry Horton. And his, uh, his invariant proceeds through the so-called traceless SU2 character varieties of punctured surfaces. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about floor homology. So I'll just kind of give a little brief introduction. Probably nobody needs this, but floor homology, uh, floor homology is often called uh, more homology of infinite dimensional spaces. Uh, there are two types that I'm going to be concerned with here. Uh, one is Lagrangian intersection floor homology, or just Lagrangian floor homology. Here we look at a space of uh, really a covering space of paths between a pair of Lagrangian manifolds and some smooth symplectic manifold M. And uh, an example of this kind of floor homology is the very well known not floor homology developed independently by Osvat and Zabo and Rasmussen. Uh, this has been you know, one of the most useful tools developed in the study of uh, knots. Um, and in fact, this uh, singular instanton homology that I spoke about is conjecturally isomorphic to not floor homology. Um, but that connection is not yet completely well understood, which is part of why I'm carrying out this kind of alternative uh, symplectic construction uh, for singular instanton not homology. And then there's the other type, instanton homology. That is, of course, the type that singular instanton not homology belongs to. Here, the space that we look at uh, is the space of irreducible principal G connections, modulo gauge equivalents, where G is some appropriate choice of Lie group. Um, and for the purposes of this talk, we're going to take this Lie group G to be SU2. This is the most frequently used and the easiest uh, space in which to work. Okay, so at the bedrock of this is this holonomy correspondence, which relates the generators of instanton floor homology over in the gauge theoretic space to SU2 characters. So flat SU2 connections, modulo gauge equivalents, are in one-to-one -one correspondence with SU2 characters. That is representations of pi one of a space into SU2 modulo conjugation. Now the Atia floor conjecture builds on that and says that if I um, if I have a Hagar's uh, splitting of a three manifold Y into that should be U one there. Um, Hagar splitting of Y into two handle bodies glued together on their common boundary sigma, then the instanton floor homology, this I star of Y, is isomorphic to the Lagrangian floor homology, uh, where my symplectic manifold is the SU2 character variety of the Hagard surface sigma, that's R of sigma here, and the two Lagrangians are the uh, SU2 character varieties of the handle bodies. And 
you can sort of generalize this conjecture to say that instanton and Lagrangian floor homologies come in isomorphic pairs. Now, this conjecture, as it stated, isn't perfectly rigorous because, in general, the SU2 character variety of a surface, a genus G surface sigma, is not actually a smooth symplectic manifold. Um, but there are some tricks that one can do to make, to make it so, and I'll be using one such trick in my construction in a bit. Okay, so the goals that I've set, obviously, is to uh, generalize Henry Horton's symplectic instanton homology for three manifolds to pairs YK. Y is going to be a connected, closed, oriented three manifold. K is a knot or link in Y. And a kind of secondary part of this is to extend uh, the some aspects of the quilted floor theory developed by Verheim and Woodward for tangles. Um, I've kind of done generalized some aspects of work that they've done uh, to help to prove topological invariance for my construction. And I'll say a little bit more about that when I come to the issue of topological invariance. Okay, so now we'll dive into the construction. So we'll fix some number k uh, greater than or equal to the bridge number of our not or link k. So that clearly has to be greater than or equal to the number of um, components of k if k is a link. We'll choose a Morse function on k with k pairs of critical points. So k index zero critical points and k index one critical points. And then we extend that to a Morse function on Y with one new pair of critical points. And we do this in such a way that the index zero critical points on K become again, index zero critical points uh, on Y and the index one critical points become index three critical points. And this Morse function induces in a very standard way, a Hagar diagram uh, for, the, for Y, which in some sense respects K. And from this extra pair, of critical points, we also get this new auxiliary object theta forming this triple yk theta. And this so-called theta graph is what you see illustrated over here on the right. So above and below the surface, Hagar surface sigma, we've got these two new critical points. And we take three flow lines uh, from connecting the extra critical index three critical point to the extra index zero critical point which punctures sigma in these three points, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So those form the triple of points, boldface Q down here. The uh, W and Z that you see here, these are K tuples of points coming from the not K. So these are where the not K punctures um, the Hagard surface sigma. So of course that accounts for an even number of points since the number of points in W and Z is equal. Now the uh, symplectic uh, space that I'm gonna work in here is gonna be the traceless SU2 character variety of the Hagard surface sigma G, where G is its genus, relative to these punctures, W, Z, and Q. And there's 2K plus three of them, hence the notation. So what do I mean by traceless SU2 character variety? Well, I mean the regular old character variety of sigma G plus an extra constraint that the classes of meridians around these punctures have to be sent to traceless matrices in SU2. And with that constraint, we get that this traceless character variety M is indeed a smooth symplectic manifold. Uh, and in fact, it's a so-called quarter monotone symplectic manifold which is important for the uh, construction of the Lagrangian floor homology down the road. Uh, for now, I'll just point out that this uh, extra triple of points was important here because this is what makes this a, a smooth manifold. In general, if you have an even number of punctures in the surface, then you don't necessarily have a smooth manifold. You have a stratified manifold and only the top stratum uh, admits is a smooth manifold admitting a symplectic structure. Now, from the Hagar diagram, we get these subvarieties L alpha and L beta in M, uh, each of which is the result of sending the respective set of attaching curves to one in SU2. So we add another constraint to get these two subvarieties in M. 
And there's a few different results out there that one can use to deduce that these are embedded Lagrangians in M. Uh, I've listed two here, but in general, there's uh, it's sort of kind of well known now that under the right circumstances, if you have a, a tangle that is some uh, properly embedded one manifold in a three manifold, um, then the uh, the, char the traceless character variety of the three manifold relative to that properly embedded one manifold embeds into the traceless character variety of the boundary relative to the points where the one manifold intersects the boundary. Okay, so now I'll get into the definitely over technical part of my uh, presentation here. Um, so, I set up, uh, I define the um, symplectic instanton knot homology for the, uh, this Hagar diagram in the first instance to be the uh, Lagrangian floor homology of these two subvarieties, L alpha and L beta. And this is a well-defined uh, homology group with coefficients in Z. In general, you can do this uh, with coefficients in Z mod two. To get coefficients in Z, you need orientations. In this case, that's fairly easy to get because it turns out that this L alpha, these two subvarieties L alpha and L beta are each diffeomorphic to uh, a Cartesian product made up of G factors of S3, really that's kind of SU2 thought of as S3, and then K copies of S2, where K is that relative bridge number of the knot relative to this Haygard splitting. And you can easily deduce from this that uh, these are, I mean, these are just, these products of spheres are spin manifolds. So in the traceless character variety, L alpha and L beta are relatively, a relatively spin pair. And by results of uh, um, O, you can show that that gives you a coherent system of orientations on the moduli spaces that define uh, Lagrangian floor homology so that you get Z coefficients out of this. Um, and since these two are simply connected, they're automatically so-called monotone Lagrangians in our quarter monotone symplectic manifold. And from that, we can deduce their so-called minimal Maslov number. And this minimal Maslov number sort of controls um, the dimensions in which various degener degenerations can occur when we compute the differential of Lagrangian floor homology. Right. So uh, there's a theorem of O that explains that when you have this particular setup, you have a pair of uh, connected compact monotone Lagrangians with minimal Maslow number greater than or equal to two, then the, um, the Lagrangian floor homology will be well-defined if the disk numbers of the two Lagrangians are equal. And the disk number sort of uh, is basically a count of sphere bubbles uh, that occur when you uh, compute the differential of the Lagrangian floor homology. So the, my proof that the Lagrangian floor homology here is well-defined uh, basically proceeds as follows. We find some symplectomorphism in the traceless character variety that carries L alpha to L beta. And when you have that symplectomorphism, that gives you isomorphisms of the moduli spaces that count those disk bubbles. And those isomorphisms then show that these disk numbers which count those disk bubbles must be the same. And so they cancel out when you compute the differential in Lagrangian floor homology. So it squares to zero. Right, so that gives us a, um, an invariant of a compatible Hagard diagram, but not necessarily an invariant of the pair YK. Um, what we'd really like to know is that there's some canonical isomorphism relating the symplectic instanton homologies for these for two compatible multi-pointed Hagard diagrams that we've established previously. So the way to do this is to start with the fact that any two uh, Hagar diagrams of the type used here are related by a finite sequence of the following kinds of moves. 
isotopies and handle slides of the attaching curves, and then two kinds of stabilization or destabilization. So an index one, two stabilization, that corresponds to changing the genus of the Hagard splitting, basically taking the connected sum uh, of your Hagard surface with a torus parameterized by two transverse curves, uh, alpha G1 and beta G1. And then there's another kind of stabilization, which instead changes the relative bridge number of the knot or link relative to the Hagard splitting. So it keeps the genus the same, but it creates an extra pair of punctures uh, where the knot meets the Hagard surface. You can think of it like taking a bit of the knot and kind of pulling it uh, through the Hagard surface so that it produces two more intersection points. Right, so the first two are really, really easy to handle simply because of the way that these uh, Lagrangians are defined. Um, these just don't have any, um, since they're sort of, these traceless character varieties are defined in terms of the free homotopy classes of these curves, it's pretty easy then to get from that, that isotopies and handle slides of those attaching curves don't change these Lagrangians at all. So in that case, the Lagrangian floor homology is just completely unchanged. To show that we get a canonical isomorphism in the case of the two kinds of stabilization, we use, Lagrange, um, we use quilted floor homology, and in particular, the embedded composition theorem in quilted floor homology to show that we get an isomorphism of those Lagrangian floor homologies. And then some things that I'm currently looking at are, for one thing, uh, extending this to other Lie groups, Lie groups other than SU2. So the singular instanton knot homology uh, can be defined for other, um, other compact Lie groups. In particular, it can be defined for um, simple, simply connected Lie groups, such as SUN. Um, so I'm looking at ways to extend that. Uh, probably probably the way to do this is to add, instead of having a uh, additional triple of points coming from that theta graph, you would want uh, n plus one extra strands. Uh, there is a canonical relative Z mod two grading on any Lagrangian floor homology. Um, in singular instanton not homology, there is a Z mod four grading. I haven't been able yet to identify any kind of finer uh, Z mod four grading for this, uh, for my construction. But since we'd like this to be an isomorphic partner for singular instanton not homology, I'd like to find some source of a Z mod four grading here. Uh, Horton for his three manifold invariant as he proves a surgery exact triangle and that would be very useful to prove uh, with the addition of the knot there should also be a, an action of the quantum uh, cohomology group um, on the Lagrangian floor homology, and that may have to that may produce an Alexander grading here. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that uh, singular instanton not homology, along with uh, not floor homology, categorifies the Alexander polynomial of a knot, and so there should be an Alexander grading that can be uh, given to my construction. And that would, uh, as part of that, one would like to find a skein exact sequence that this construction obeys. And yep, I think that's it. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. All right, thank you, David, for the very nice talk. Um, any questions from the audience? Can you explain a little bit what you uh, extended in the the stuff that Katrina and I did? Oh, sure. So, um, uh, yeah. So, in uh, the paper that I that I the paper of yours that I read, um, you have you basically work with uh, trivial three manifold topology, and to uh, in particular to prove um, the isomorphism in the case of um, a uh, index one, two stabilization, I needed to be able to work with non-trivial um, three-manifold topology in a three-manifold board, boardism. 
So, so your construction works for uh, links in, in arbitrary three-dimensional cobordisms, that's, is that right? And ours right. was just for, um, I don't even remember what ours was for, to be honest. Ours right, was so for trivial so topological cobordisms. Yeah, so uh, your work yeah. would work just fine if, if yeah. Uh, yeah. everything is in S3, basically. Oh, oh okay. And could, could you, yeah, I mean, does it end up coming down to the same kind of thing where you take like a, 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 a sort of a, a relative Morse pair, or something like that, or? Yeah, yeah, it's basically, yeah. The, it's a similar kind of, uh, yeah, it's a really similar construction there. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other questions? I actually have questions. So, so your definition of this invariant and some sometimes the, the forces as a sort of a version of the T of your conjecture, right? By definition. Mm -hmm. Um is there a purely sort of gauge theoretical description of it? A purely like, gauge direct description, like is there a kind of what so let me think. Uh so there's certainly a gauge there, um, a sort of gauge direct description of the generators. I mean, that's sort of that's just the holonomy description there. So I guess what you're asking is, is there? Do I have a way to uh, to kind of recast other aspects of this Lagrangian fluoromology, the differential in um, in gauge theoretic terms? Yes, yes. I do not, but um, that maybe is another thing that I should have put into kind of the ongoing work section of this. Um, I'm. I think that the, the right tool to do that is um, some machinery developed sort of initially by Maxim Lipiansky and then expounded upon by uh, Ali Daimi, Kenji Fukaya, along with Maxim um, in their a proof of a kind of special case of the three manifold um, Atiyah floor conjecture, where they create this uh, mixed equation that relates the sort of um, relate the moduli space of holomorphic disks in Lagrangian floor homology to the moduli space of ASD connections in instanton homology. But I haven't carried out that, that project yet. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, so if there are no more questions, then we thank David again. So thanks 